guys, how are you doing? It is four o'clock and it is Friday and we are going to be making some espresso martinis today. Now, you're probably drinking in the sunshine and you are having a good old day. Um, let's stay positive, I think is the thing that we're all trying to do. You've probably done your Joe Wicks workout. You've done your yoga on the lawn. You've rewarded yourself with a little bit of a drink. And you know what? The espresso martini is gonna be your friend today, okay? Because there will come a point where you are thinking, I am flagging here, and you want some of that luxurious, velvety rocket fuel that we call the espresso martini. Now, my name is William um, from Ladies and Gents Bar. Uh, I like to make drinks. I like to drink drinks. I hope you can drink with me. And today we are going to be making an espresso martini with various things that we have found in our kitchen cabinet. Now remember, with cocktail making, there is no right, there is no wrong. It is about you guys getting involved and you guys having lots and lots of fun. So, the espresso martini, uh, Dick Bradsall um, in 1983 uh, came up with this drink. Um, it was a drink that apparently somebody needed to be kind of uh, woken the fuck up and he made a, a combination of vodka and coffee. And if you think about kind of the, um, the 80s and the early 90s, people were drinking vodka and Red Bull and this is what this drink does. It's designed for that era. It is a work hard, play hard kind of drink and it will get you out of trouble if you guys have been day drinking, okay? You're crashing into the mountain, pull up on the stick, whoa! Survive another day by drinking espresso martinis. Now we're gonna look at a few different ways that we can make espresso martinis with various things around the house or from the shop. The number one thing that we need to do with all of our cocktails before we get into any of the nitty gritty or anything that it is that we're trying to kind of use today is our ice. Hack number one, grab some of your ice. I've just got a, a regular ice cube, kind of like a few bowls here, some regular kind of ice cubes in a bowl. And I have taken the ice out and I've put it in the bowl and I've just put it to one side. The ice will acclimatize to a room temperature. It's much easier to work with. You will enjoy using this. Now, if you are feeling a little bit prepped up, but don't worry, Again, it doesn't matter if you don't have the glassware, if you don't have any technical ability. What you can do is you can put your glassware that you are going to use in the fridge. Now, one of the ways to speed up chilling down a glass is just to fill it with a little bit of water and an ice cube in there, you can see, and then that's just gonna chill down my glass a little bit faster. Now, when it comes to Espresso martinis, we need some vodka. Get some vodka from wherever you want. If you want a little life hack, DM me and I will get you some money off your next vodka purchase, okay? I can do that. So just send me a little message, I'll send you a link. You're stuck at home, they'll deliver it in a few days. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The vodka I'm using today, I'm very partial to. It's Polish, it's potato based. It is 40%. I like to have a strong vodka. Now when it comes to coffee, we're gonna be looking at a whole different variety. And if you've been following us, every Friday we'll give you links to start scavenging around and seeing what you can find in your kitchen cabinets so you can be a bit prepared. But hopefully with the espresso martini today, we have something for everybody. Now, first up, that's right guys, Nescafe. Did you know that some of the world's best bars and restaurants use Nescafe? Boom! Mind blown! Why do they use Nescafe? I mean, essentially, it's a pretty terrible freeze-dried coffee. The reason they use it is for a consistency, so that they can make the same coffee wherever they go. If they start to expand, they know how they're making it. We're gonna use a little bit of this today just to prove the point. If you go to a store, for example, just checking my flies aren't undone, sorry about that. If you, this is live TV, guys. So, go to a store, um, I picked up a couple of these guys. Now, 
I'm not affiliated with these brands. I don't know what they are, but they were the only ones in the store. This one says three espressos in one can. This one says Frappuccino. Both of them can make pretty easy cocktails and a kind of very kind of um, uh, quite um, sweet kind of Frappuccino style um, uh, espresso martini. Nothing wrong with that. And then lastly, if you are lucky enough, you might have some of these little pods at home, okay? Now normally um, you can get these like this or they do an eco version. That will make you a really decent espresso. And again, some of the world's best restaurants in the world, they use these for the uh, after dinner experience. Thank you, Mr. George Clooney. Wrong brand, but you know what I'm saying. So we are going to look today at starting with some of the espresso martini with Nescafe. So Nescafe, very, very simple. Okay, guys, you are going to need a boiling kettle. Clearly you've made coffee before, so you understand this, okay? I have one just here like so. And you're gonna put in about 300 ml, okay, of some boiling water. That's how coffee's made. No surprises so far. Then you are going to grab yourself a tablespoon, okay? I like that kind of coming in, tablespoon. And you're gonna put in one, two, 10 of these, three, four, five, six, seven, count with me. What is it? 10, okay? And this is really to taste now. I've got some Demerara sugar. You can use any sugar that you can find, okay? At this point, we're in lockdown. It doesn't matter, you know, the wildlife is taking over. We've got kind of like Joe Wicks in the morning. We've got um, um, banana bread. What's the other thing? Everyone's shaving their head. Wow, you guys must be so bored shaving your head. I couldn't do that. I mean, I've, you know, I'm waiting for my hair to probably disappear in the next two weeks, but you guys are shaving your head. So look, when it comes to sugar, don't beat yourself up about it. It doesn't matter at all. So we've got here um, five. Let me get this open a little bit more. So we've got five of these guys here. One, here we go, two, three, and you can count with me for this one. Thank you. And the last one is number, thank you. Some of you are paying attention. I appreciate that. So we've got that there and we are just gonna stir it down, stir it down. Now that is going to make something that you can put in the fridge, put it into an empty bottle, and that is going to make a very kind of like thick um, um, kind of coffee mixture with a little bit of sweetness to it, okay? And to that, you're probably gonna have to add kind of like little things just to jazz it up. Now that on its own is a very strong coffee, okay? Now with any of these things, what you could do is, Anybody like these bad boys, huh? These are my favorite. You can grab yourself some Maltesers and chuck it in. Uh, they're gonna melt down slightly. So we're gonna do like, here we go. A whole packet of Maltesers in there, because I can. Then we're going to, um, the other day I was looking and I found myself, this was like right in the back. I found some nutmeg and I found some cinnamon. You could put a little bit of nutmeg in there maybe, you know, just jazz it up. What goes with coffee? What goes with chocolate? That's the kind of mindset here. Maybe a bit of cinnamon. You could kind of like crack a little bit of cinnamon, cinnamon in there, okay? And all of those things, okay, are going to work quite nicely to create kind of like quite a rich, textured, velvety, um, almost, um, Guinness-like, okay? So we've got all of that there, and then we would let that sit for a little bit. We would probably kind of like just allow it to strain a little bit because I've got some little bits of cinnamon in there, and that's probably not gonna be very nice to taste. But essentially, what we do have, oh yeah, there we go, is a lovely kind of big, 
coffee, chocolate, sweet flavour. Now, I don't know about you guys, but during Christmas, we're always kind of like baking and doing stuff. I found this Monin syrup. So it's a sugar syrup and it is um, Pan des Epices. So it's a gingerbread syrup. Okay, again, something like that is going to be quite nice to kind of like go in with the coffee. Okay, what we're thinking here is vodka, coffee, flavour. And if we can bring all of those guys together, I think this is going to be something that's going to be very tasty indeed. So whilst that's going over there, that's just going to stew for a little bit. We're going to talk about how we're going to be mixing stuff today. So what can you mix with? Well, you can mix with pretty much anything. Have you got a jam jar at home? I quite like to use these little tippy toppy cups here because it's got a lid and stuff and it can do stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, if you go online, um, you know, uh, they're not very expensive. You can get these shakers. They work quite well. Today, what we're gonna try and do is, I don't know if anybody remembers a long time ago, bartenders used to have a glass bit and they used to have um, a metal tin underneath and those were kind of like quite uh, quite quite fashionable I guess so we're going to use one of those because what it does is it creates a little bit of a seal there okay so we've got that ready to go now for measuring okay measuring alcohol we could pick up a bottle and we could just sort of like pour it and if you're like me, I tend to kind of like hold it open and go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. And that means I've got three shots in there. That's the kind of way I'm drinking. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Okay. But what is a little bit more, just a little bit more kind of precise, is if you guys go and grab a shot glass. Now, I have got a shot glass today. Um, I got this on my holidays. I know that in this shot glass, I'm gonna hold around about two measures, okay? So two single measures, making it a double. That's 50 mil of booze. So what I can do is I can always count on that to be kind of like my friend. So we are going to, first of all, have a look at making it with this, okay? And then afterwards, when we're kind of like not using this so much anymore. We'll then try it with uh, one of these. Uh, you guys make a choice, okay? I'm gonna come up to the screen because, you know, I'm 104 years old and I can't quite see it, but do you guys, after we've made it with the Nescafe, should we make it with the cafe latte in a can? Or should we make it with the Starbucks Frappuccino in a can, okay? So just let me know which one you want me to go to after we've done this. So, what we're going to do here is grab our cup. Uh, I'm going to put inside a nice, generous piece of ice. I am just going to grab myself some vodka. And in that vodka, let's put this guy over here. I am going to pour myself, I don't know if you can see that there, okay, a nice, generous measure of vodka, okay? So that goes in there. Now, for you guys just tuning in, the espresso martini is going to be your friends today. You're going to be in the sunshine, okay, self-isolating in your garden, your balcony, just at home, you know, looking out, maybe having a little drink. You know, it's a bank holiday in our minds. You're going to hit a point, you're going to need to level up, and the espresso martini is going to be really good for that, okay? So it's going to kind of be, you know, a friend of yours, so keep, keep kind of this in mind that you can always hit the mess espresso martini you know, for that extra bit of vava voom in your life. So we've got a double measure, okay. I do like the sumptuous mix of vodka and espresso, and if we had coffee liqueur, that would be really good as well, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, there we go, just strain off a little bit there. Now, I found this in the cupboard. Think coffee. Think, you could think maybe oranges, chocolate orange, you know, uh, nuts go with coffee and chocolate. You know, that's the mindset we're going to get in here. I found this bottle from Christmas, chocolate, 
cream liqueur from Hotel Chocolat. There's, there's thousands of these stores up and down. You might have some Baileys, you might have something else. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little, like, little bit in there. Okay. Let's see how that does. That looks a little bit creamy now. And I am going to get this over the top. Now, what I'm trying to do is make sure that that is sealed, okay? I don't know if you can see that there, but that's what I'm sort of trying to do is make sure that that's sealed. Now this could get me in a lot of trouble when espresso martini goes absolutely everywhere. But we're gonna try, okay? So far, so good. And what we're doing is, the ice is cooling everything down, and we are also mixing everything, and I can also feel to touch, okay? I can touch it, it's getting colder and colder and colder, okay? So there we go. We've got espresso, and what I thought we would do is, for this guy today, why don't we just serve it in a normal cup, okay? So here we go, here we go, here we go. Shake, 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 shake. And what I can do is I've got this old coffee cup. It's like a reusable coffee cup. And it's got a little lid on top. And what that means is there's a little spout there. And what I can do is I can just, okay, now I have to say, there's a little kind of like head of foam forming just there, okay, which is kind of like quite pleasing to see. But this does look a little bit like a builder's tea, but looks can be deceiving, okay. I can see it's forming, you know, it's kind of like, it's got that kind of like Guinness-y kind of like feel to it. Guinness meets a builder's tea, okay. So let's try this one. That is not too bad. I think all of those different things I threw in there, the Maltese has come out. I've got kind of quite, quite a harsh coffee, but it's kind of, it's quite pleasant because I know it's there. It feels quite punchy. Then uh, the vodka, I think for me, Polish potato vodka is creamy and rich and viscous and I love that. Then I've got kind of like just a little bit on the back palette of some of those kind of like weird ingredients like the gingerbread is coming through and stuff like that. So, not too bad. Not too bad at all, okay? So, let's cross Nescafe off the list. Where are we going now? So let's have a look at you guys. Some of you are saying hello. Um, do you think, what should we go for? Okay. So you guys want to go for the, okay, cool. So you guys want to go for the Frappuccino, okay? Not a bad shout. I kind of enjoy that. So let me just put this to one side, okay, over here. Let's clear the decks, because that's what we're going to focus on today, is the Frappuccino. Um, I hope you guys are all doing this at home as well. So, again, this is a pretty simple way of making an espresso martini. Now what you can do is you can go to any store, okay, and you can buy one of these coffee in a can or coffee in a jar. You know that they've got coffee, it's a little bit kind of like uh, fluffy, it's definitely quite sweet, but it's got some caffeine in there. And that's kind of the holy grail, the little trinity, the flavour map of what it is that we're trying to find there. So, again, we know how to do this, okay? We grab our vodka, we go into our cup, our shot glass that we got when we were on holiday or you just enjoyed doing shots at home, okay? I got this on holiday. We're going to put in a double measure because we now know that a shot glass roughly holds two single shots in there, okay? A shot glass 
tends to hold a double measure in there. So we've got that there. Then this is going to be really, really simple. We are going to crack open, okay, our Frappuccino. I mean, what's nice about that, it's rich, it's indulgent, it's creamy, it's got kind of like just a nice fluffy feel to it. Okay, there's, there's nothing really that offensive about it. I'm not a big fan, you know, of these drinks, but there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I think if you had this in the fridge and you just wanted to kind of like turn the music up, hang on. No diggity, no doubt. You're gonna have a good time. So I'm gonna put in um, probably uh, two double measures in there. Then I'm gonna find myself a piece of ice, okay? The ice I'm using is just bog standard ice, okay? There's nothing special about it. A lot of people will tell you clear ice is great and it looks beautiful, but you know what? If you're blindfold, you couldn't taste the difference between clear ice and just any ordinary ice, okay? Just one of those things that people talk about. So, I've got my tippy toppy cup. I'm now going to put the same if I was in kind of like a bar or something, I guess I would wash it in between. I hope I would at least. And then, here we go. Whoa, whoa there Nelly, that nearly exploded all over me. So here we go. So I'm really trying to give that a good old hard shake. Okay guys, I know, I know. Here we go, all right? And then, do you remember that glass that we had earlier? It's got a lovely big ice cube in it, just there, okay? I'm now just gonna get rid of that. Don't worry, it's not on the carpet. And then, let's see what this is gonna look like, okay? Can you see, guys? Whoa! That is creamy as anything, okay? Look at that, That's, that looks, that's beginning to look like a proper espresso martini. Now, again, if you have access to it, you can put the beans on top. The beans, they come from, uh, I think, southern Italy with uh, Zambuca, you would get three coffee beans on top and they represent health, wealth and happiness. I mean, what is, what, is, what is a better toast for the ages at the moment for everybody, okay? So we've got that, um, and we're gonna have a little try on that. Oh man, that is a basic, I mean basic two ingredient um, coffee that we have just, coffee uh, espresso martini that we've just made, but it is delicious. It is everything that, that, again, look, sumptuous. It's a big mix of coffee um, from a can. Beautiful vodka. It's creamy, it's indulgent, and I could definitely drink a few of those. Oh my God. That with banana bread, and I would be bang on trend. Cool. So, if you wanted to, some other tips. Do you know what? I've got a little bit more. I'm gonna pour myself a little bit more. There we go. Oh, the ice has gone in everyone, the ice has gone in. I don't care. One of the other things I would suggest, okay, and this is kind of winding up now, just this is if you happen to have it. I would grab yourself an orange, okay? Remember we talked about coffee, we talked about um, chocolate, we talked about all of those wonderful things, yeah? Well, if you get an orange and just cut that little bit of peel just there like that okay and you get your espresso martini just in front of us just like that and you break the back of the orange there we go what you're going to do is you're going to get all of that lovely orange oil over the top and this now is going to taste like a terry's chocolate orange oh Oh yeah, that citrus is a top tip. It just brings the espresso martini 
to a next level. Cool. Um, guys, I appreciate you dropping by. Um, every Friday at four o'clock, we will be tackling a cocktail that you can make from ingredients in the kitchen cabinet. And if you don't have something, we'll give you options. You can swap it out, send me suggestions. Um, if you want to purchase anything online and have it delivered to you, we have some hookups. So just DM me and then I will send you some discount codes personally and you will get some really, really juicy deals, okay? All I want to say uh, to everybody is I will see you next Friday at four o'clock. Follow us and you will start to see what we're doing during the week so you can prepare your ingredients. Stay safe, wash your hands. We love you guys. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us. Have a great weekend, okay? See you guys later, bye.